news, sports, education, and entertainment. Wake Up GI with Jeffrey Smith. Brought to you by the Geary Community Schools Corporation. All right, everybody, guess what? We're back 30 minutes after the hour. Once again, it's a beautiful Monday. It's President's Day. That's right, it is. It's the, what, 19th of February 2024, and this is Wake Up GI with Jeffrey Smith. As promised, we got an author in the studio, ladies and gentlemen. He is the author of a play that is making its debut this coming uh, Thursday and Friday over at the West Side Leadership Guild. Of course, it's being directed by our good friend, Mr. Mark Spencer. It's entitled The Garage. And as I said, it's a nice story about redemption and a journey. And uh, as he, as uh, I was just talking with Michael just a little bit before, Try to get him to reveal it. You're going to have to go and get you a ticket and sit down like everybody else and watch it. But it, it looks like it's got a little bit of everything in there. And then you're going to come out really feeling a little inspired and, and, and kind of glad you came. And I think ultimately that's all you can ask for when you go out here and put out a well-produced product. And so with that being said, let's go ahead and talk to the man himself, Mr. Michael Woods, the author of The Garage. What's going on, my friend? Good morning, Jeff. I'm more than happy to be here, man. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Before we get into uh, talking about this story, I always kind of like to find out a little bit about the people that we're talking about. So give us a little bit of your background. Are you from this area or where are you from? Okay. Well, I've been in Indiana for the last 10 years. Yeah. I'm actually from Chicago okay. originally, the neighbors. <laughs> and uh, this story is an inspirational story that everybody got to come see. Right. I got a story for you. It's a story of about life right. and you will truly enjoy it yeah yeah and so when you have you know with everything that goes on is that's going on in our society in the world wars just internal strife mental illness and things like that kind of what compelled you or what personally got you on this journey to tell this story was there some kind of personal situation that you kind of observed or was this just something that kind of came to you well Jeff when you get to know me I'm uh one of the most optimistic people you'll ever meet. Yeah. And uh, I believe in sh sharing positive stories yeah. as opposed to we have so much negativity in the world. Oh, my goodness. So we need something positive to inspire our youth to be the best they can be. So I love, whether it's through poetry or uh, just writing and sharing a story, I love to share something inspirational. Yeah, yeah. Now, you and I were talking. That's mm -hmm. what I was, I was asking you when you mm -hmm. were talking about your background. So... You know, what do you, I mean, is this your day job? Are you just a poet, author, or is this something mm -hmm. that has always, you know, because we got a lot of people, uh, you know, my wife, uh, a lot of people who are very talented in the arts. And, you know, sometimes you got to go out here and do your day job, or maybe you've gone to college, you've got mm -hmm. another profession, mm -hmm. and you kind of end up just, it, it keeps calling you back. And eventually mm -hmm. you end up just kind of doing it, and then you break through and it becomes your day job, but it's really not work. How did you kind of, were you always an artistic young man? It's funny you say that, Jeff. No, this is not my day job by no means. Right. Uh, I personally, I've, I've been in many different business ventures. Yes. Uh, I'm by my day job, I manage an interior design company. Is nice. what I do. Yeah. But uh, this is just something that was in me. In addition to, we all have an artistic side. Right. I believe. And uh, I've always enjoyed writing. Mm -hmm. So. Um, it's one of those things I always tell people, everybody has a story. Right. You know, you just have to sit down, put pen to paper, uh, one sentence equals a paragraph, a paragraph equals a book, and next thing you know, it happens. You just have to follow your dreams and make it happen. No, I agree with you. It's crazy because I've got a quote in my office on the computer that's, ac that's actually something that I believe came out from Ernest Hemingway, and it's ba basically it's just a very cliche statement. Like you said, it's mm -hmm. just the first thing a writer needs to do is write. Right. Because I know so many people, and I went through this a little bit when I was younger, and you know, because I'm somebody I really really love uh, reading and writing psychological thrillers and things like that. And one of the things that happens, sometimes it can become very tedious. You know, you get that, quote, writer's block or what have you. Absolutely. And you just, it becomes work and it's hard to tap into that little, that little pool of creativity. And That's so I've true. always been very happy to, to kind of sit down and pick the brains of others who write, whether it be short stories, long form, or poetry or anything else, or even music. Right. And just kind of figure out what it is that gets them to go into that room, mm -hmm. sit down at that table or that couch or wherever it is that they muse, and go out here and pull it out of themselves. I mean, do you have that kind of place? 
Absolutely, I do. <laughs> what we all go through, uh, as you mentioned, writer's blocks, or you're always going to be faced with uh, that other side of you that tell you you can't. Yeah. I, you know, um, you, you reminded me of a poem I wrote many years ago. If as a child you were taught you had the power to control your thoughts. Thoughts are things created within the start of how limitations begin. I always yeah. think outside the box. You must be clever like a fox. Don't allow people to stifle your thinking because their light is barely blinking. Make optimism the thoughts you keep it'll limit the weeds and the harvest you reap so in other words yeah. thoughts are powerful you keep your thoughts powerful you go out and do what you got to do believing in yourself keep God first and the rest is history brother you, you know I'm not gonna let you just get away you just dropped that knowledgeable poem on me we got to go off into your poetry a little bit <laughs> okay because, uh, you know I have somebody that is in my family who was doing spoken word for a, a second and I can you know I don't know our ages, but I figure we're somewhere around the same age range. Okay. And being from Chicago, I remember I came back from college, and mm -hmm. this was like in the 90s. And remember when Love Jones came out, and Absolutely. all of a sudden it started to ex it kind of expose this underground culture thing that was going on in our communities in the urban areas. Yeah. And Chicago was really like ground zero for it, to yeah. be honest with you. I think True. the, the Lauren, Lauren State, I think the movie was set in Chicago, if I'm not mistaken. That is correct. And so when I remember coming back and going with my cousin and a bunch of other people, we started hitting all the clubs, and the spoken word thing was kind of coming up. Mm -hmm. And kind of the icon, even though he was a rapper, was kind of like common, and a lot of people like that were helping bring this along. Did you participate in that? Because you were absolutely talented. Well, I didn't participate in that, but I participated in many other events yeah. that took place. Uh, that's just another part. Uh, I give God praise. Uh, yeah. That's just another part of uh, the gifts that we have within us, within ourselves that... Uh, just manifest themselves, right. you know? Yeah, so you never, I mean, uh, did you put out a book of poetry or things like that? Because, as I said, that was pretty, you know, I know you were just pulling that out of your hat. You, that's probably one uh, of so many. We can sit down, know. I can, we can go yeah. all day with poetry. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, that's we so many. This play, I got to right. pick your brain up. <laughs> well, I mean, so, so what have you done with it? Well, you know, I've done events for the Chicago Police Department where they'll call, call me out to do events for the youth. Yeah. I, I uh, created a poem called Young People which is all about choices. Right. You know, choices are so in, important. And again, I'm all about inspiring our youth to right. be the best that they can be. Mm -hmm. And all that uh, added to um, me creating this book and yeah. creating this inspirational story. This story, The Garage, it uh, it's about life and it's about dreams. It's about aspirations. It's about Ultimately, it's about a pastor. Yeah, give because us, without giving us everything, give us the back. Give us the back. I, well, I'm going to use without giving us everything. I'm going to use a term. People don't realize that pastors are human, and they go through everything every everyone else go through. Right. But they have to be that big person and not share their feelings all the time right. because their job is to lead a flock. Mm -hmm. And this is a pastor that, I'm going to use the word, life crisis. He went through a life crisis. And uh, going through a life crisis, he found himself working back in a garage, walk, walking away from everything. He lost his faith. Right. And uh, there's a tagline in the book, uh, a garage is full of grease. This guy is lost in grease but he'll be found in grace. Oh. So it's a very, very interesting story. It's funny. Uh, you're going you're gonna to experience many different emotions while watching this right. play. The director, Mark Spencer, and his cast, man, they are awesome. Right, right. So we, please come out Thursday night, 7 p.m., the 22nd, yeah. Friday night, February 23rd mm -hmm. at 7 p.m. We got a great... Thursday and Friday. Absolutely. Yeah. Great story for you. Now, tell me about the process, okay? You and I talked a little bit before we came on the air about, you know, kind of writing. And mm -hmm. you, that's when you kind of t uh, told me that you had a background, obviously, in poetry and things like that. Right. But let's talk about the garage because, okay. I, you know, I always like to go and pull the curtain back to let people, you know, appreciate the process. So you go out here. you got this great idea uh, that you were inspired to write. Mm -hmm. and you start to put pen to paper. Mm -hmm. And so how long did it kind of take you to go through your drafts? Because the worst thing that I've seen, not only personal experience, but also I've heard other writers talk about is if you sit back and you let the author go through the drafts, it'll never be done because there's always something you want to always change or nick. I mean, at one point did you say, you know what, I'm finished here, we're going to go and put this out. So how, how long was that process? 
It was, uh, <laughs> writing is a process. Yeah, it is. You know, as a writer, uh, again, you mentioned it earlier, you go through writer block. Sometimes the thoughts aren't just flowing like you want them to. Right. And, uh, but you can't get discouraged. You have to, um, just stay and allow God to work through you. Mm -hmm. And it'll come back. It'll right. come back. Sometimes, uh, so I'm saying to all of you out there in uh, Radio Land, if uh, there's a story, because there's a story in all of us, if there's something you want to write, just sometimes the thoughts don't always flow. And right. you will experience writer's block. Oh, of course. But just try to stay focused. Stick to your dream. And uh, that dream will manifest itself. Now, what's your mythology? Are you are, are you one of those guys that, that like to go out here and put a nice outline together and then kind of work through that outline and character development and things like that? So basically, by the time you finish the outline, the story has secretly written itself, and then it's just about you filling in the blanks with all the nuances. Or do you more or less subscribe to what I call the Stephen King philosophy, which I was kind of brought up on as a kid, and that is, is you just kind of sit in front of that typewriter, or you sit in front of that computer screen, and you introduce yourself to the characters, and they take you throughout the story, and it develops how it goes. That's pretty much it. Uh, <laughs> you become each and every character. Right. Being a writer, you're you're an actor or an actress. And uh, basically, you have to become every single character right. that you're writing about. So, uh, yeah, it takes outlining. It takes a little bit of everything. You have to outline it. Uh, you Well, how would this character say this? Or right. how would the character say that? Or how would they present this? And then in writing, you have to be able to create the vision yeah. for the reader. Yeah. So, uh yeah, it's it's a lot involved. Yeah, it's a lot I, involved. Yeah, because I like that. I mm -hmm. like you know, as I said, I've always looked at it as as I said, I use the Stephen King business model, and that is is that you 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 are the scribe. You're being brought into that world, and That's the it. characters introduce themselves to you. And during that point in time, you find out what they're what they're going to do, how they behave, and your job is to just sit back here and kind of document it and massage it and things like that. Uh, but the story very much comes alive and it starts to tell itself. I know that's very like super. I mean, it's very holistic and all that. But mm -hmm. that's kind of where that Stephen King mentality came from. That's pretty much it. That's yeah, pretty like much it. it. I yeah. like it. Mm -hmm. So you get stuff on paper. You finished up. Mm -hmm. What do you do at this point? Do you self-publish? You send it off? How did it work after that? Well, you self-publish. I decided to self-publish like because uh, a lot of times when uh, you go through a publishing company, no disrespect to any publishing company, but they own your works. Yes. So um, I would suggest to anyone to first start self-publish first yeah. and see what you can do with your work mm -hmm. as opposed to all your ideas that you've created. Somebody else pretty much own it and you get a small percentage of what you've created. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that. Now, that you know, that said, that can be also intimidating for a lot of people, but I would assume with technology and the way things are now, it's a lot easier and less intimidating because I think, you know, when people think about the mock-ups, the, the mm -hmm. book cover, the design yeah. of that, right. putting it all together, how does it look, and the editing, it, it can be a daunting task, and sometimes you say, well, I'll just pay somebody to do it, but as you just alluded to, you, mm -hmm. you lose a little bit of your rights to Absolutely. your to your intellectual property, Absolutely. and so was it easier with, you know, I'm talking about all the programs that are out here where you, did you design your own book covers and the whole nine? Did you do all that? Yes. That's yes. Nice. Yeah. Um, with technology today, it is much easier, right. you know, to be creative and uh, to take your ideas and um, bring them to life. It's right. much easier today. Right. Right. I like it. So uh, that's yeah. what you did. Yeah. And so after the book comes out, you kind of sit sit there and you know, what was your next move before you decided? that I'm going to go and maybe start to put this into a physical uh, play. I don't know if maybe even at one point you thought film. Well, I originally wrote it thinking a play. Okay. I thought how great this would be as a play. Yeah. Uh, with time, um, with uh, I believe it'll be a movie with time. Yeah, you know? yeah. But, uh, yeah, I wrote it trying to, because there's great music in this. Nice. I mean, uh, there is a... Uh, not only gospel music, but there's secular music. And it's intertwined. And they're intertwined, right. Because uh, all secular music is, it derives, its root is gospel. Yeah. So um, 
people are going to love the entertainment in this play. They now, really are. Now, what was that? Okay, so now I'm curious about this because, mm -hmm. you know, it's one thing when you're out here writing the book. Mm -hmm. Now, all of a sudden, you're transcribing it into a screenplay or a script, okay? Right, right. I, I mean, you, you, now you have to kind of imply certain things visually that the reader can kind of use with his or her imagination as they read the book. Mm -hmm. Did you transcribe it into a screenplay or did you, that is kind of when you reached out and I don't know, Mark or anybody else kind of got involved. How did that work? Well, I was fortunate enough to meet uh, Mark Spencer. Okay. And uh, Mark took my idea and he showed me where, along with uh, his crew, showed me where we can take this where I believe it can go. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so I went that, to the pros, in yeah. other words. And so it was at that point in time that you, the, you, the screenplay or the script started to be developed, right. and then you see, obviously you went out and started casting and put it all together. Well, after, no, I created the book. I completed the book. Okay, the and book's then done. The book's done, right. And then what I did after that, um, like most people starting out, saw books from out of the trunk of my car. That's how you do it. And um, <laughs> from there, people that read the book... I was getting raving reviews, mm -hmm. and uh, it really, really made me feel good that people enjoyed the story. What are you doing with this? What right, do you, you know? Right. I was getting things like that, but I would get that with my poetry as well. So uh, from there, I worked on uh, finding the people that can help me take it to the next level. Yeah, yeah. Now you you bring up a good point, and mm -hmm. so is this. Do you look at this as an opportunity for reprints of the original book and expanding that? Because as I said, as you just alluded to, and I believe this, mm -hmm. is that with interest in things like that, you have a lot of people that once they hear that there's a book that's behind this, mm -hmm. it's going to be obvious that they want to go and read the book. Please I mean, you, 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 That's exactly. So does this provide opportunity? And once again, you talk about being in control. Now you can control the reprints and how many are, and you know you can just start to build on this. Well, they can get the book at Amazon.com. Okay. All they do is go to Amazon.com. It's, it's called The Garage yeah. by Michael A. Woods. They can find the book. But, yeah, this book is going to be a series. I'm actually working on the oh. sec second part of it right now. Yeah. yeah it's going to be a series. Now, is this kind of limited? Well, I don't want to say limited. Is this kind of operating in the field of, I guess, uh, inspirational? Because I'll give you an example. There, you know, I really think post-pandemic, we started to see a big jump. You can go to look at your streaming services, and you see a lot of inspirational programming. They don't really call it religious programming, mm -hmm. but I, I, there was a success of a show called The Chosen. Mm -hmm. And you start to see a lot of different, these different genres really start to expand. I mean, you saw it during Christmas. You see streaming on networks like Hallmark start to capitalize on this. Everybody is kind of, you know, before it used to be kind of taboo to go there. Mm -hmm. Everybody's now kind of wrapping them, their arms around inspirational programming because there's just so much sex, drugs, rock and roll and crap out there that there's something to be said for some nice wholesome stuff where you feel a little rejuvenated, can sit there, don't have to tell the kids to leave the room, right. and the families can watch it together. Is this a space that you want to occupy? That is absolutely a space I want to occupy because as I shared with you earlier, there's so much negativity in the world. And as I said also, thoughts are things. If we concentrate, the seeds you plant are the seeds you reap. Yeah. If you plant good seed, you'll get good harvest. Right. So if we're putting good positive stuff out there, maybe we can change the world. If we just change one person, I agree. we've succeeded. Yeah. You know, yeah. so yeah, my whole objective is to uh put out good inspirational, motivational type stories. Now I want to ask you because you mm -hmm. you 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 brought up the children earlier and you and I are on the same page about mm -hmm. this. And mm -hmm. as somebody I'm sure your heart and soul and your love is still in the city that you grew up in in Chicago. Mm -hmm. I'm just using it as an example. It's mm -hmm. not like anything's unique for Chicago. Mm -hmm. But as we sit here and we talk about our young people and we look uh, and I always use the phrase, the toothpaste is out of the tube. And, and what I mean by that is that I think when we start to get social media, when we start to get a lot of things, we were so busy allowing Silicon Valley and those people to just put this in everybody's hands that we didn't really, uh, really sit back and ask ourselves if we should. Right. And so now we have young people and generations of young people that have grown up without a natural time in their lives, which is innocence. There's plenty of time when, you know, we're, we're right. all here as adults. There's That's a lot right. of world out there. Right. But you do need to have that period of time in which you do look at things from rose-colored glasses. There is a Santa Claus and a tooth fairy. Absolutely. You should have that wonderment. These Absolutely. kids don't have that anymore. They no, know they about, don't. like, the streets. They know about life, despair, and all that. So how do we get stories like this into these children's hands? 
<laughs> it's, it's funny you said that. It's going to take other authors. It, it takes us all coming together yeah. and start putting out positive messages for yeah. our youth. You know, yeah, you got your whole life to be grown. <laughs> As a kid, enjoy being a kid, yeah. you know? Yeah. And that has a lot to do with the media, and they have the opportunity today to go on the Internet and uh, when we were coming up, we didn't have that. No. We didn't have no. that. So these kids are a little faster than we were today, you yeah. know? and it's just taking away their <laughs> optimism, their hope. I mean, of being know, children. It, yeah, mm -hmm. of being kids, and I just see it all too often. I know my, mm -hmm. my wife has a summer program, and we have young people that work with us, and I've mm -hmm. been to some people over in Chicago, and I look at the men and women in organizations and groups, and I understand and appreciate how they really get out there and try to get after it. And it's just sometimes when you hear the stories about, you know, you got young people there that might be 13 and have already seen a yeah. couple of loved ones killed. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's... things like that. And, and know about teen pregnancy way too early yes. and molestations and just the horrible side of life. Yes. And it seems that we're taking it away from them, too, because we don't allow them that safe space in which they can simply sit here and think about what could be or just how good things are. And they are, and it's funny you said that because uh, these same children you're talking about to see all of this uh, negative, negative side of life, they have so much creative energy inside of right. them that they can be doing so many positive things. Right. They just have to be taught. Yeah, yeah. They just have to be taught what's in them. I, listen, and they can. They can. That's right. why I love this conversation. Mm -hmm. Listen, I mean, you know, I, I say it all the time on this show. You know, I'm a big movie buff and things like that. And I appreciate dramas and gritty dramas and things like that. But, mm -hmm. you know, when all the shows are always like the shy and be, I mean, it just, we just need some things <laughs> that sometimes have a little bit of a different storyline and show some empowering family and all those kind of values. So I appreciate everything you're doing. Well, thank you. And and uh, stories like The Shy, those are great stories yeah. and reality. It, it's, it's real. It happens. But there's another side of life that happens that we don't glorify or right. we don't uh, televise those stories enough. Right, you right. Because they're not gritty. They, right, they, right. Well, at least that's what we tell ourselves. Right, right. When we're starting to see, as I, as I brought up even with The Chosen and a lot of these others, that the polls and the surveys show that the public is responding to those shows as well. It's just these slow networks and these uh, studio heads that mm -hmm. have this in their head right. that we don't want that. So I love right. this conversation. Once again, let's get back to the play, which debuts this coming Thursday. Give us some logistics about that. So what are the starting times? Where can we get tickets? Okay. First of all, I want to thank my sponsors, which is Edgewater Health. Yes. Uh, you can get tickets at edgewaterhealth.org. Again, you can get tickets at edgewaterhealth.org. The tickets are only $25. That's it. The show will be the 23rd, February 23rd at 7. No, let's start with February 22nd. <laughs> Thursday, February yeah, 22nd. Thursday. That's right. Thursday, February 22nd at 7 p.m. And Friday, February 23rd at 7 p.m. Uh, please come out. Please support. This is Black History Month. Uh, we have an, uh, an all-black cast. Show you how talented our African-American cast are. Yeah. A lot of great talent come out of Gary, as we know. Yeah, yeah. So uh, they're going out there. This this cast is amazing. Are there adults in it's, there as well? It's a little bit of it's adults in there as well. Okay. It's a little bit of everybody in this play. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, all ages are welcome yes. to the play. Uh, again, I said it's going to be great humor. This character that plays that owns the garage is a character named Diesel. Diesel is going to, he's going to, he's going to be very, very funny with his uh, comedic side. Diesel is a very humorous guy. Yeah, who is this Diesel? I mean, Diesel, Diesel Jones. He owns the garage. Okay, okay. yeah. Diesel is a, um, Diesel is a country boy, and uh, but uh, not a lot of education. Right. But when it comes to cars. He's a genius. Yeah. He's a genius. And uh, Diesel equates everything to females. Uh -huh. And uh, he loves women. So he can equate a car's engine. Oh, I'm, I'm not going to tell you. you got to come see. He's a, man, man, this yeah. is this is a funny, funny story. I and I know you're going to love it. Diesel's uh, analogies that he, uh, he likens engines and oh, yeah. all that kind of stuff to women. It's a, it's a gentleman named Vincent White Jr. who plays Diesel. He's from Gary. Vincent is a great actor. And uh, it's going to be a great play. we got a lot of great actors and actresses from Gary, Indiana in this play. Yeah. Please come out and support Gary's own. 
in Black History Month. Absolutely. This play, The Garage, is going to be something for you to see. It's going to be something you'll be talking about for years to come. I believe that. I believe that. I want to get into your feelings. I mean, what's that? I mean, I'm over here at Speckle, but what's that going to be like, man, when you sit down there mm -hmm. on Thursday and you see your two dimensional idea become 3D? Man, I'm going to, man, I'm right now, I'm so excited about it and uh, I'm so grateful, thankful. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'd probably be like, who's that big old guy over there crying over there in the corner over there? <laughs> I mean, this is the closest we're doing. Yeah. Man. This is the closest I would assume childbirth. I mean, yeah. you literally have yep. something inside of you. That's that exactly brewing, what it and is. And now you get to see it walk and, and yep. talk and act all on its own. Right. And you just sit there like the proud papa in That's the audience how... just, look, just looking at it. Yeah, it's it's going to be amazing. I can't even tell you what emotions I'll be experiencing on that day. I just know... I can't wait to see you there. Please come out. Introduce yes. yourself to me. I'll be doing a book signing there, and I'm looking forward to meeting everyone. You want to do a little Q&A afterwards as well? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I looking like for, I'm, I'm, Anybody that's a, that's in, uh, that wants to be a writer, please come see me. Talk to me. I can. Uh, we can share some uh, ideas, and yeah. uh, I can do what I can to help you. I like that. I like mm -hmm. bring some of that poetry out, too. Oh, I will, I, will, I will definitely do that. Yeah. I'll definitely do that. <laughs> All right. <coughs> yeah. Well, give us uh, a little more. Do you got a website or anything like that before I let you go? I want people to be able to find you, brother. You are absolutely amazing. You know, I do have a website that uh, is called Woods World Publishing, but hold off. Hold, it's, on. hold off. Yeah. Uh, it's coming. Okay. Uh, it's we're working on it right now. I like the idea, though. Not only yeah. will you obviously be doing yourself, but yeah. you will probably at some point be open to helping others. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to leave you with a poem. Go called ahead. That, uh, I was called, about to, I was about this to is, ask you this is, this is called Young People, okay? Uh, this poem is about choices. And uh, tell me if you can relate. Um, goes like this. Young people, young people. What are you thinking? Another day of getting high, doing drugs, or drinking, sleeping away your day, running the streets all night because you heard about a party that's supposed to be tight. You get your fit on, white shoes, sagging jeans, looking in the mirror so fresh, so clean. You jump in your ride, pumping your sounds on 10, heading toward the liquor store to pick up some gin. You get your cup ready, and your boys do too. You look through the rearview mirror, and the police are following you. You're feeling very nervous. Your heart skips a beat. You turn your music down and tell your boys to chill in the back seat. Your boys begin to panic while trying to hide their weed. Your homie sitting beside you, he got a gun up his sleeve. Young people, young people, what are you thinking? You call it racial profiling the driving while black. They call it good police work because you're dirty, and that's a fact. The jails are full of young people just like you, making up silly excuses for the dumb things they do. Some get caught up. Others get brought up on charges that sometimes stick. You become a It's taking your mind is shaking, your body's feeling sick. You're asking yourself what happened because it happened just that quick. This poem was created to make you think how your precious gift of life can be challenged in a blink. Young people, young people, remember this. The things you do affect your loved ones too. So when you start your day, don't forget to pray. God will help you every step of the way. You are the future and your thoughts, they really count. Now go out and show the world what you really think about young people. Oh my goodness, nice. Listen, st don't stop with the poetry. This is just a little advice from this guy over here. Thanks, You're Jeff. pretty good. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate <laughs> no, that. I love that poem. All, all jokes aside, that was absolutely amazing. Is there a book of poetry? Please tell me you got one. Yeah, I got one, but it's coming. I got a new one that's on the way. I'm working what on that as well. the old one? The old one uh, is called Dandelions yeah. in the Garden, but... I got a new one. You got to see. It's, I mean, we it's coming. We want the old stuff, too. You're okay. Really, yeah. Don't, for, don't this, sleep on some of your old stuff. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, that was awesome. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. I want to thank you, man. This has been, really been a, a, a pleasure. Thank uh, you. No, thank you for having me. Yeah. I sincerely appreciate being here. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And so, once again, go check out The Garage. Starts Thursday. Starts Thursday. Uh, over at Westside Theater Guild. Our guy, Mark Spencer's director, but the author and the brain behind it is Mr. Michael A. Woods. And if you've been listening to this, interview.
This brother has a lot of, to offer, a lot to say, and he's very talented and articulate in how he does it, both poetry as well as putting it on the pen, um, putting it on the pad, and as you as you heard, transcribed into a wonderful play. So we wish you all the success, brother. Thank you. Don't forget about us little folks. When I'll cut it out. Yeah, no, you know, listen, I, I appreciate it. I, I know. I've seen it happen before. Just answer at least one of my calls when I call. Jeffrey, I promise. All right. All right. All right, my brother. Thank you very much. You have a great one. We got our wonderful other guy.